Hi there again. This lesson is about the cycloid, all right? How to draw the cycloid, which is another locus of a point. So the cycloid is, this time we've got a wheel, and we're taking a point on that wheel, and as this rotates, the wheel, so it's not rotating on itself, it's rotating on a surface, all right? So it's literally a wheel rolling by. We're going to choose a point, or we're given a point on that circle. I'm taking this, this point here. And you have to draw the locus of that point as it does a number of revolutions. For, for instance, we're going to do it for one revolution. All right, so again, if it's a circle, we need 12 different positions for each 1 12th of a revolution. So it's going to rotate without slipping across this horizontal surface. So the method is this. It's as if we're going to take a snapshot 12 times as it does one revolution. I'm going to take the distance of 1 12th. I've already divided the circle into 12. And from those 12 divisions I've taken these 12 horizontal lines to show the position of each point for 1 12th of a revolution. I'm taking the distance of one twelfth of a division from the circumference and I'm going to mark off the distance 12 times on the horizontal line. That would represent the distance it's going to roll after 12 revolutions. Because after one revol sorry, after one revolution, because after one revolution it's going to rotate as long as its circumference. So from the center I'm taking these 12 divisions which is going to represent the length of its circumference so 12 divisions I'm taking them from the center straight away because that's where I want to mark off with because the 12 revolution the 12 divisions the tw one revolution the length of its circumference should have been measured on the surface but then i'm going to take them up to the center so if i started off at this point here that's my point 1 and it has a center here so that's number 1 as well when, I, when the center gets to point 2, the point will no longer be in this position, but it will be in that position, since I've got a clockwise rotation. When the center gets to 3, the point would be up here. The center gets to 4, the point will be up here, and so on. So these numbers, the middle numbers, are taken from 1 to 12. And then you get another one where you started off with. So started from one and ended that one. And clockwise rotation around the circle. I'm going to continue the numbers. Don't draw them this big or this dark when you're drawing a question on the cycle. Now, I'm going to represent a circle on each of those centers. All right, and each time the point is going to shift up one twelfth of the circle. So I'm taking the radius of the circle and I'm going to draw it again on center two. Now, in fact, you don't have to draw the whole circle because you will only interested where that point is, and that point is up. To where the two has begun. So that's my first point of the cycloid. So so far the point has risen from there to there. I'm taking center three with the same radius of the circle, and this time the circle the point is marked where you have the line coming out from the three. You could draw the whole circle to represent the wheel, but we're only interested in that point. 
and you keep on going the four from the center four to where I've got four marked center five to where the five is center six to where the six is and center seven you can see when it's half a revolution the point is going to be vertically upwards you can't mark that with a compass because it's directly above it, it's parallel to the arc. So that's half the cycloid. I'm going to draw it in so you start realizing what the shape should be. The other half should be a mirror image of that, a reflection of that. Now you can see that where I marked number 5, this is point 0.5. If you join that with an arc, with a line, you see that you get the same line as the line joining the center and the 5. If you join the 6 with its point, you see you get the same point as the 6 from that point. So, you don't have to draw these, but just to show you that this line is parallel to the 6th line. Now, I'm, I'm telling you this because here we often get a common mistake when drawing the number 8 not specifically num because it's number 8 because I'm coming down from this point here and you, ten you tend to after number 7 you go to number 8 and you look at number 8 and you mark on this side instead of that side it's a very common mistake but you have to see that the point 8 from the circle is in this direction. So that should be the case also from point 8 when it gets here. So we're marking on this side. All right. Remember this is a clockwise rotation and we're marking on that side. If you rotate on this side, if you mark on that side, that would mean that it has started to rotate in the opposite direction. So that's point 7. Point 8 effect I used 0.7 there instead, so 0.8 should be there. Not my previous point. 0.9. 9. 10 is in the middle. 11 is down there. 12 is down there. And number 1, as I did with number 7, should be exactly beneath number 1. So, so you get a symmetrical shape for the cycloid, and you could re and you should remember that shape when you're starting it off, because that's the result you want. Now, obviously, now obviously. I started off from the bottom, so you don't, you're not always going to get that shape. If you started off from the top, you're going to start off with that part, and then you'll get this first part attached to it from here. So you'll get something like that instead. So it start. So depending on where you start off, it's going to be cut off. This is your basic. Cycloid starting from the bottom for one revolution. If you need more than one revolution, you just continue going after that for how many revolutions you want. I did 12 divisions for one revolution, you keep on going for more revolutions. So let's try this again starting from a different point. Alright, for example, starting from this point here. So, taking the divisions from the circle, open the compass as wide as one of the divisions, from the center,
Those are six divisions. Now in this case I'm going to do 15 divisions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and another one so I've got three extra divisions for one fourth of a division so in this case I'm going to have one and one fourth revs starting from this point here moving clockwise So that's center one, and that's where point. So that's where point one is going to be for my start of point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and start off again. One, two, three, four. You always get one more than you need. So fifteen spaces. Alright, so 12 around the circle and 15 on the line. So open the compass as wide as the circle and this is my point 1. Point 2 is here and point 2 is at that position. Point 3 is here, point 3 is up there. Point 4 should be straight up This is where I mentioned before the mistake, which I was four, five on this side, on that side, six, seven on the horizontal line, eight down here, nine down here, ten straight down. And going up again. 11, 12, 13, which is number one again, 2, 3, and again 4, straight up. So 1 and 1, 4 revolution, 1 revolution, 1 fourth will give you back up here. Realize when I did number 11, so number 10 was straight down, number 11 I didn't mark for number 11 I didn't mark on this side of number 11, I marked on that side of number 11 because number 11 is that way. So what I need to do now is draw in the curve. So we still got a symmetrical shape. At this time, that part should have been there because we started off from that point. Right, so here we have, there you've got the, the cycle. 